Hello everyone and welcome back to the season finale of The Committee Reads. I am your host Kaiju X and with me today I have GVR, Alex, and Ditto. And today we will be reading the last KWCE of 2018. And that goes to King Ghidorah Showa vs. Mothra Showa, Megalon, and King Caesar Showa by Godzilla vs. Rayquaza. Another yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Another storm of bolts like lightning from from the heavens, another city in ruins. This was a summation of the past few days on Earth, as a dragon from the stars reduced all in its path to ash. For the past few years, humanity had been discovering a new world, one with many giant animals from a bygone era crawling from unseen places. All seemed grand, with most of them content to live far away from humanity with some of the more aggressive ones either dead or sealed away in hibernation, like Godzilla. But then a meteor fell to the earth, before, before soon bursting open to reveal a demon of death and destruction. Earth had been warned, but those warnings had gone unheeded. Now it, the destroyer of worlds was upon them, and all would feel his wrath, but hope had not died. Mothra volunteered to face the dragon, but she knew she couldn't do it alone. That is why, is why, the UN now gathered, discussing how to help Mothra. The debates were heated. Why do we even need to continue this discussion? Questioned the Prime Minister of Japan, bags under his eyes, revealing his lack of sleep. We've already gotten the Izumi royal family to agree to release their guardian. Because some of us aren't willing to wager the fate of the world on stupid old legend yelled the representative of the United States, his fists clenched and shaking. Our world is currently being attacked by a three-headed dragon from space, and there are twin fairies an inch tall who speak to, for a, gigant, a giant moth currently in the room with us, stated the representative of China, pointing to the Shobujin standing upon a pedestal. Though I understand your apprehension, I almost nothing is out of the realm of possibility now. Don't you just love it when everyone from different nations speaks one language? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, I don't know, uh, English has taken over the world here? Look, it, they're actually speaking their native languages. It's just being translated to the reader. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, yeah but my immersion, bro. <laughs> yeah. I only want to get, like, one-third of this. <laughs> Look, what you're what's actually not being stated is that there's translators. <laughs> yeah, they're the, they're the Shobujin, telepathically translating the text to us. Ah. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> so, we can confirm... That was the intent all along. Yes, totally. We didn't just make that up just now. Just George Lucas did. <laughs> <laughs> we can confirm that King Caesar truly does exist. The Shobujin spoke in unison. But we fear not even his help alone will be enough. I don't know, dude's pretty strong, but alright. But alright. Look, this was 2017 me who thought Shoa Ghidorah was actually super powerful. And then Alex came into your life and ruined that. Yeah, see, I fixed yeah. everything. <laughs> see, isn't it better when you have me in your life? Yeah, I saw Alex's vid on Shoa King Ghidorah and just my eyes opened like the scales <laughs> fell off them. Your brain expanded. Like, so, wait a minute, he's not that strong. <laughs> Factual. Yikes. Anyway. The whole room pondered this for several moments before the Russian representative spoke up in English. Uh, isn't Godzilla still buried under the ice since his battle with Angiris in 1955? Do not ask why I tried to do that, and I will never do that again. Come on, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Godzilla trapped in the ice? No, that's not more Jamaican. <laughs> no, right. Let's just leave this group with our bad Russian accents. Mine is now starting like a Hindu. <laughs> Dumbass Americans. <laughs> anyway, the whole time to read the election. I always wanted to read the first sentence as the whole room erupted with laughter, but <laughs> anyway, the whole room erupted with arguments. It felt like half the room found it, found it to be the perfect solution to King Ghidorah, 
while the other half hated it with every fiber of their being. The Shobujin sighed, waiting for the debates to die down so they could speak. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, began shaking violently, as if an earthquake struck. Everyone ceased their arguments, running for cover as rumbling intensified. But in a moment, it stopped, everything growing silent. The doors to the massive room swung open, an out-of-breath security guard barging in. As, as the officer attempted to recollect his breath and wits, another figure walked behind him, a middle-aged man, wearing what resembled a white toga. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you need help with a certain dragon, the man said, a grin forming on his face. Well, the undercrowned king of Zetopia is happy to lend our aid. Okay, so let's see why. The Zetopian beckoned them all to follow him outside. They all followed him. The sheer audacity of his actions the only reason they didn't ignore and arrest him, only to be absolutely astounded at what they found. In front of the UN building was a gargantuan, seemingly bottomless pit, but what stood next to the hole shocked everyone even more. A kaiju that resembled a humanoid beetle, dull brown and gray in color. Instead of forearms, it had two massive drills just below its elbows. An antenna tipped with what resembled a star jutted from its forehead. The beetle roared before clanging its drills together. I present our god, the Cetopian grandly exclaimed. Megalon! It had been a peaceful day in Yokohama, with everything going about their visual day-to-day -day routines. Until a series of cackles... Everything going about their visual day-to-day -day routines? Is that what you just said? Usual day of... <laughs> I saw... <laughs> you know what? Pass! <laughs> <laughs> God, was just like, screw you, you read it. <laughs> I mean, it's your match. It's your responsibility. To be fair. It had been a peaceful day in Yokohama, with everyone going about their usual day-to-day -day routines until a series of cackles broke the peace, the omen of the destroyer. King Ghidorah descended from the clouds, gravity beams spewing from his jaws which tore down buildings and gutted the streets. Massive crowds fled from him, only to be torn apart by debris from the hurricane force winds from his wings, or obliterated by his beams. As the demon continued, continued his assault, the sky was slowly being filled with smoke from the destruction. Tanks and jets were deployed to stop him, but they failed to slow the rampage. King Ghidorah screeched his glee once more, challenging the whole world to try and stop him. Just like the times he did before, it seemed no answer would come. The demon went back to devastating the city, until three simultaneous cries sounded out. King Ghidorah looked to see three beings coming towards him. Leading the charge was a lion-headed humanoid with brown skin and yellow fur running down its back, clawed hands and feet, and pure amber eyes. King Caesar took up a fighting pose as Megalon did the same, followed by Mothra hovering in the air above them. The four kaiju remained still, daring the other side to make the first move. Far away, the Prime Minister of Japan, the Shobujin, Princess Nami Izumi and the mysterious Emperor of Cetopia watched the scene unfold on a large monitor. Everyone in that room was sweating bullets except for the Cetopian, who had nothing but confidence in his god. Also, don't you just love how I brought the Izumi royal family in here out of nowhere? I love it, yeah. Also, I'm, I'm confused. Shouldn't uh, Izumi be like a kid? Because what year is this set in? Because it's so much. It's Godzilla's and nice. Oh my god. Well, okay. This is supposed to be... Is this it's an supposed AD to be or it's supposed to be set in the sixties. This is supposed to be when Ghidorah first showed up. So nineteen sixty four, okay. even though Godzilla's still locked in ice and so it's an AU case. Yes, it's an alternate universe. It's supposed to be an alternate universe where Godzilla never got broken out of the ice okay. after raids again. But but Princess Azumi would be a kid. I don't think they would bring her to such a battlefield. Where's Kong? Well, she's in like well, what about her, the mother? <laughs> Well, they're not on the wouldn't battlefield. Just... They're like super far away. They're in like wouldn't, a government building. Well, wouldn't it just shouldn't it be the queen instead? <laughs> you see, the, you see, 2017 GVR had what is called smooth brain. <laughs> uh, I'll take it. I, I don't think it's smooth. It feel it feels really dented. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you understand how brains work? No. Okay. I don't think any of us do. <laughs> Look, in case the, this match isn't already... Unless it is, in, in case it isn't already apparent, I was just naming names to be like, Look at this character, they're here now. Reference! Yay! Even though, yeah, Alex, you're right. Azumi could be like... 
ten. A preteen, yeah. Teen to preteen, or, or even a baby, because no, not a baby. Probably like a small child. I would, I would yeah. say like teen to child to teen somewhere there. Yeah, this is for the ten into a battlefield we bust. <laughs> Yeah, this is ten, this should be about like ten years before versus Mecha Godzilla. Yes. Ooh, make a, ooh, make her witness monsters getting slaughtered. We must expose <laughs> our child to war. We must. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, she is far away, but yeah, you're right. They are showing her this battle. So ooh, mm. possibly show her God getting killed. We must. <laughs> yep. Nothing but big brains here with this match. <laughs> Good job, me. <laughs> the silence was broken by King Caesar's footfalls as he charged the destroyer. A trio of gravity bolts met him in response, the King of Terror flailing his heads wildly to strike every part of his foe that he could. Oh, Shoah Ghidorah is not the King of Terror? He, <laughs> he counts mm -hmm. as the King of Terror. He comes from space. Okay, well, Greyshot would have changed this out to be, like, three-headed monster or gold flaily fucko. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, no, we're no, spaces. Would have been rejected. We're... Because of you show a Kador. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> yeah. Fair. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. You use show a Kador. You got to use the lame rebirth the moth version. <laughs> Just stick like antlers on his heads in the banner, and it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just replace hair with antlers, and you're good. Yeah. The Leonine Guardian stopped, crossing his arms to block his chest. The constant firing of the bolts, combined with their user's chaotic movements, made it impossible for King Caesar to redirect them with his eyes. A large black orb crashed into the King of Terror's side, exploding into fire which clung to his scales. King Ghidorah stopped his assault, turning to face Megalon. The beetle god roared in, a in an attempt at intimidation, then ran towards the destroyer. King Ghidorah began flapping his wings, kicking up fierce winds which extinguished the fire on his body. The winds continued, slamming into Megalon and slowing his stride. Debris pelted the, de the deity's body, halting him completely. Megalon's wings opened before the beetle leapt into the air to avoid the gust. This action caused the de de deity to be sent flying back, crashing into buildings. Because Megalon is an idiot. <laughs> As the structures collapsed onto Megalon, Mothra landed on King Ghidorah's middle head. The moth began scratching the sides of the dragon's face with her legs, while also slapping her wings onto the tops of the outer heads. Before King Ghidorah could fight back, King Caesar delivered a fierce dropkick to the dragon's torso, staggering it. Getting to his feet, the Leo Nine Guardian began punching the destroyer's stomach. Megalon burst from the ground behind the three. The Beetle God began slapping the sides of his drills against the King of Terror's back, occasionally throwing in a jab with the pointed ends. King Dor's twin tails wrapped around Megalon's arms before throwing him back into the hole he had come from. A gravity bolt from the demon's left head burned into Mothra's side, scorching off hair and blackening skin, causing her to release her grip and flee into the air. King Ghidorah slammed his three skulls into King Caesar's own, knocking the Guardian back. The destroyer fired another trio of gravity beams all aimed at the Guardian of Okinawa's face. King Caesar moved his head to catch the three beams in his left eye before a concentrated bolt of lightning soared from his right. The beam tore into the dragon's chest, blasting away and scorching scales along with flesh. As King Ghidorah screeched in shock and pain, King Caesar charged forward once more. The King of Terror leapt forward, slamming his feet into the Guardian's torso and knocking him to the ground. The Leonine Guardian struggled beneath the demon's weight before the demon leaped into the air again. King Ghidorah crashed into King Caesar, expecting some noise of pain to leave his lips. Irritated when none came, King Ghidorah kept repeating the action, but no cry of anguish came. But what he did notice was his foe's skin cracking from the blows, revealing this was no organic being, but instead one of stone. The King of Terror flew high into the air, preparing to finish his foe with a stomp backed by his immense weight. The dragon came down, screeching in glee. The ground beneath King Caesar collapsed, obscuring him from vision. King Caesar stopped in midair, shrieking in enraged confusion. King Ghidorah stopped in midair, shrieking in enraged confusion. A great creaking sound echoed out, coming from the team's left. The dragon looked to his side before seeing a colossal skyscraper collapsing towards him. Thousands of tons worth of metal and stone enveloped the King of Terror, muffling his furious roars. Mothra, floating where the top of the building had once stood, soared further into the city. Also, I like how I have King Caesar, like, not feeling pain, but I'm pretty sure he, like, roars in agony several times in the movie. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> he probably roared in agony in this match itself, and I just didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah. The goddess of peace stopped, landing on a building. The ground in front of her began to bulge upwards before dirt and concrete tore away to reveal a mighty drill. Megalon separated his arms before leaping out of the pit. King Caesar followed, then checked the cracks on his torso. 
After seeing they weren't severe, the Guardian roared to the, roared to the skies in joy, his allies responding with gleeful calls of their own. Vile laughter answered them. King Ghidorah cast a shadow upon the three, his, exp his expressions filled with hatred. A storm of gravity bolts rained down on the trio, causing them all to stumble and groan in pain. King Ghidorah aimed the three beams at Caesar and Mothra, separating them from Megalon. The King of Terror landed before the deity, grinning with all three mouths. The beetle god slapped the demon's torso with both his drills. King Ghidorah threw his left leg up, bashing it against Megalon's stomach. The demon's three mouths descended, the center binding onto the antenna adorning his foe's head, and the other two onto its shoulders. The demon's teeth dug into the flesh, drawing sharp strands of green blood. Megalon bellowed in agony as he felt his antennae be torn into, prompting him to fire a napalm bomb point blank. King Ghidorah screeched in shock, backing away. The beetle god shot off two more napalm bombs while shooting a steady stream of lightning from his horn. The projectiles blasted away more scales from the destroyer's body, scorching his flesh. King Ghidorah prepared to fight back until King Caesar leaped onto his back. The golem wrapped his right arm around the destroyer's center neck, pulling it back. King Caesar repeatedly stomped his foe's back while trying to strangle the life out of its central head. King Ghidorah's outer heads twisted to face the golem before headbutting the guardian. King Caesar's grip loosened before a lash on the back from the demon's twin tails caused him to let go entirely. King Ghidorah took off into the air, knocking King Caesar off his back. Mothra charged at the demon, only to be smacked away by his mighty wings. The King of Terror wrapped his tails around the Leo Nine Guardian's shoulders before lifting him off the ground. A series of napalm bombs flew towards the King of Terror, only to be repelled and scattered by the fierce winds of his wings. Megalon fired a bolt of lightning at King Caesar's face, which the Guardian proceeded to catch and redirect. The lightning bolt blazed into the flesh between Ghidorah's legs, right into his balls, but this only angered the Destroyer. King Ghidorah hovered above Megalon before dropping from over three times the Beetle God's height. Megalon screamed in horrid agony as King Ghidorah's feet slammed into the top of his shoulders, a sickening crack echoing throughout the city. King Caesar slammed into the ground, the twin tails still clinging to him, the momentum of the drop digging an imprint into the concrete. King Ghidorah cackled in sadistic glee as he soared upwards again, slamming King Caesar into Megalon. The deity hit the ground hard, his arms now limp and useless. You gotta love how I spent, like, two whole sentences describing King Caesar hit the ground. Damn. <laughs> Damn, dude. The King of Terror dragged the golem through several building tops, cracks beginning to form on the Guardian's body. Mothra crashed headfirst into the demon's back, then screeched in pain. I guess she hurt herself? I guess. Oh, sometimes it happens. Ghidorah cackled before flicking his tails up, bringing the lion with him. Mothra barely dodged her allies and clamped her legs around her foe's central neck. The goddess began flapping her wings, a shining powder coming from them. King Ghidorah breathed the powder in, and then began coughing violently. The King of Terror screeched as it entered his eyes and nostrils, blinding him. The destroyer's tails uncurled from around King Caesar's arms, dropping him. The guardian hit the ground hard, staying still. Mothra released her grip on the demon as it fell from the sky, tearing through several buildings with his descent. King Caesar got up slowly, trying to check if anything on his body was gravely damaged. The goddess and the golem quickly fled, heading back to their other ally. King Caesar helped Megalon to his feet, the deity groaning in pain. The two guardians took a moment to examine the beetle's limp arms, their minds racing as they waited for the dragon to arrive any second. King Caesar apologized to his ally before grabbing the beetle god's right arm and shoulder. The golem twisted the arm back into its socket, ignoring the groans of pain and elicited. King Caesar quickly did the same for the other. Megalon raised both his arms, flinching in pain at the movement, but he was still grateful he could use them at all. A scream of pure hatred tore into the trio's ears, filling them all with dread. Pass. Before they before they could react, King Ghidorah slammed into the ground before them, sending concrete flying. The demon's eyes were bloodshot, scars and dust covering his once great, graceful form. The King of Terror attacked Mothra, tearing into her wings with his with his teeth. The goddess screeched as her wings were ripped apart, piece by piece. Megalon locked his drills together before revving them up and driving them into the dragon's back, just to the right of the spine. The crimson blood speed from the wound causing King Ghidorah to scream in anguish. The King of Terror swiftly turned around, spewing gravity bolts at the Beetle God. Megalon stumbled back, the bolts carving black trenches into his flesh. King Ghidorah kept firing, forcing Megalon to the ground, writhing in torment. King Caesar leapt onto the demon's back, widening the drill wound with a haymaker. The dragon screamed in suffering. All three of King Ghidorah's heads bent back, grabbing the golem. The, <laughs> the destroyer Destroy swung... The what? Oh, I can hear myself coming out of someone else's mic. Oh, whatever. Uh. All three 
King Ghidorah. No. The destroyer swung the golem overhead, bashing into the pavement. The King of Terror stomped the Okinawa in Didi's face, causing a series of cracks to spider across its skull. King Ghidorah spotted his own blood on the golem's hand, angering him even further. The demon raised his leg into the air once more, only to stop and scream in pain as Mothra rammed into his bleeding wound. Uh, with a mighty flap of his wings, King Ghidorah flew into the air. He began raining gravity bolts down onto the trio. Two of his bolts were sent back by King Caesar's eye, lancing into the already burnt flesh. The dragon began to fly away, no more bolts leaving his maw. Okay, let's see. Where, where's... Oh no, there we go. He's fleeting, yelled the Shobojin, shaking in fear. Isn't that a good thing, questioned the Prime Minister, sweat pouring down his face. Not if he comes back, answered the Shobojin, terrified. Megalon will not allow this vile creature to escape, loudly declared the Sitopian leader Antonio. Megalon began climbing to his feet, every nerve in his body burning. He looked up, seeing the story of the world soaring into the sky. Something in his mind told him to pursue the two dragon, uh. even though all he wanted... <laughs> <laughs> Pursue to dragon, yeah. Even though all he wanted to do was sleep, but this voice was strong, and Megalon followed its command by spreading his wings. The beetle god left the ground, his wings rapidly beating. A bolt of lightning left his horn, striking King Ghidorah's back. The King of Terror fell slightly, the pain briefly overpowering him. This gave the deity the opportunity to get closer. His mouth opening, a napalm bomb left his throat. Detonating on the demon's back, some of the napalm land inside King Ghidorah's open wound, causing so much pain the demon could not scream. King Ghidorah felt unconscious, hitting the ground with a booming thud that could be heard throughout the whole city. Megalon's wings... Uh... Oh no. There. Stop moving. Causing him to drop as well. Only when he fell, he landed on King Caesar's raised hands. The golem having awoken a short time ago. The weight nearly brought the Okinawan deity to his knees, but he remained standing. King Caesar slowly lowered his ally to the ground, then began walking to King Ghidorah. The Leonine Guardian observed his body for a moment before placing his foot on the dragon's back. Roaring in triumph, Megalon joined him doing the same. Mothra wearily joined her allies, also chirping out her joy at the victory. They did it, exclaimed the Shobojin and Princess Nami, jumping with joy. The Prime Minister merely sighed in relief. Uh, see? What did I say? Megalon went up. Male, bragged Antonio, his smile physically incapable of being any wider. He slowly reached into his robe. A napalm bomb left Megalon's mouth, crashing into Mothra. Mothra screeched in agony as her entire body was lit on fire. Before anyone in the room could react, Antonio pulled out a gun of some kind. It fired a pellet which let out a mysterious gas. The Prime Minister, Nami, Azumi, and the Shobujin all collapsed. They still lived, but they were unconscious for the time being. Antonio walked out of the room, laughing I to himself. I can't believe he gassed a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't they do that in the movie itself? Uh, Kinda, I think. I mean, it's not, it's not far out. The thing I'm more surprised by is the fact that Antonio is just immune to sleep gas? Yeah, don't you know? But, uh, oh yeah. Damn fools. And pass. Fuck you, ditto. <laughs> but clearly, Antonio was sniffing the gas before he emerged to the surface so he could build up an immunity to it. Fair enough. <laughs> King Caesar dove at Megalon, punching the beetle god across the face. The deity hit the ground, writhing in pain. Silver ghost shaped spaceships appeared above the door, firing strange beams at the destroyer's heads. The Okinawan deity kicked Megalon away before turning the ships. He snarled before dashing at the UFOs. The explosion struck the back of the gold golem's head, knocking him to the ground. King Caesar got up grateful. Got up grateful the back of his head was still intact before turning to face the traitorous insect. Megalon ran forward, only to fall from pain. King Caesar grabbed the back of the beetle's neck before lifting him to his feet. The golem slammed his forehead into Megalon's up, now cracking the beetle's head open. As his green blood began to cover his face, the Satopian deity command combined his drills, then began digging into the ground. King Caesar dove forward, gripping his foes back before they could disappear. Using all the strength, the guardian lifted the beetle high into the air before bending him backwards to slam into the ground. King Caesar straddled the insect's chest, raising it, both his fists high. 
All right, passing back to Ditto. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say. What? I'm gonna kick his like, ass. Can you do that? <laughs> Gravity bolts tore into the gold side, knocking him off Satopian deity. Bricks and gears were exposed within the guardian's body. The sound of revving drill struck the golem's ears. Before his eyes caught up, Megalon disappearing underground, King Caesar began to get up only for another burst of gravity balls to rake across the back. Worsening back down, King Caesar looked back down at his tormentor simply standing there. He didn't know what dragon aided the Cetopian deity, but he guessed it had to do with the ships that appeared moments ago. The ground... The ground beneath the golem fell away, sending him falling into the gigantic pit. King Caesar tried to grab one of them walls of the cavern, cavern only for her. A drill to pierce his palm and knock him down. King Caesar yelled as he fell further into the ca cavern before crashing into the bottom. The golem looked at the cavern's entrance which had at least two at least two thousand thousand kilometers away to see Megalon and King Caesar standing there something joined the two fiend sides. Its stomach was lined with yellow scales green covering the rest of its body instead of hands and feet. It, had massive slabs of sharpened metal, and a single eye, which was a deep red. Deep red. <laughs> also, I want to say something real quick. Thousand kilometers was a screw up. It was supposed to be like just one kilometer, but I didn't know if I wanted to do one kilometer or one thousand meters, and I mixed them up and then did not see that. <laughs> All right. Deep red. Deep. Red. Deep. Red. <laughs> Yikes. D Yikes. What's the what's the problem? Deep. Red. Deep. Red. <laughs> oh no, Alex is stuck on loop. <laughs> I can. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Deep. Red. <laughs> Gigan raised his arm hot before bringing it down into the pit, screeching in his distant glee. Megalon looked down into the pit before beginning to rapid fire napalm bombs at his lightning. King Caesar began fire. I mean, King Ghidorah fucking goddamn. <laughs> King began firing his gravity bolts into the hole as well. King Caesar fell in fear, fear and wrath as his body was assaulted by attacks. His vision was obscured by the fire climbing higher and higher, but he knew his internal organs were being torn apart. The Prime Minister, the Shobi Jin, and the Kid awoke. They were all confused trying to remember what had happened before going unconscious. Their memories were renewed when they looked to the screen. When they saw what they saw caused the Shobi Jin to scream. Gagan, Meglon, King Ghidorah screeched to the heavens, standing before a seemingly bottomless pit which spewed up a smoke. What made the fairy scream was the corner of the screen. <laughs> Of the screen which showed the burnt carcass of Mothra. The screen faded away, but being replaced by two figures sitting in a gray room with technology. On the right there's on the right there stood in Antonio. On the left it had a figure clad in an orange jumpsuit. The man in orange slowly smiled in a jilted way. One that suggested that body was not its own. Earthlings, he spoke in a monotone, emotionless voice. Your planet now belongs to us, sillies. Oh, you you read it wrong. Actually, it's, your planet now belongs to us. Now, <laughs> <laughs> all your bases are to belong to us. I was the good rider. We need, yeah, we're putting you on the watch list now. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Keep it up. Screen change back Keep... to three monsters: Gigan, Megalon, even King Ghidor shall now be the instruments of our conquest. This. Three screeched to the heavens. If you wish to stand against them, this will be your fate. The camera panned over to Mothra's body, blackened and, and wingless. Or is that enough not to convince you? The camera began to enter the pit. The fires have gone out. The Saya had greeted everyone, made Princess Navi scream, then fall to her knees, sobbing into her hands. King Caesar's rocky flesh had melted along with the metal gears with him. The liquid pooled around the U shaped gem that had once been sized. Great. Yeah, what a great idea. Exposing like a 10 year old kid to this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, She's good job, <laughs> Your time is at an end, Earthling. Surrender now, and your death will be swift. Without the broadcast, cut off it. As the Shobijin and the princess bitterly wept over the loss of their guardians, the Japanese Prime Minister had a different reaction. 
He marched over to the phone with the office, then dialed in when what he needed. He picked it up, then began talking. You saw it too? Right, good. Get everyone else here. We're not going down like this. We're going to get these sons of bitches for what they've done. Humanity does not die here. We're going to release Godzilla from the icicle. I mean, that would be their next logical step at this point. Oh yeah, no, totally. Get Godzilla out of there, no get him kick arse, we're good. When um, I King Kong and King Ghidorah show it, even though technically I'd just say Megalon one. Yeah. yeah. You want to know something? What? Oh. I'm, I don't have plans to write a sequel for this, but the initial plan I had was for this to be the start of series, and the second match in this series would have been Russia releasing Godzilla from the ice, and fighting Gigan, and Gigan brutally murders Godzilla. Wow. Wow. You could barely win against him in the movie. It's just like, what? This is because it was because it was sixties Godzilla, oh. not seventies. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah, no, it's sixties Godzilla who only fights by throwing boulders and flailing his arms like an idiot. Plot twist. Anyway. Okay, but what if you got King Kong and Ebra to back him up? <laughs> <laughs> then they'd win. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, all you need is King Kong by going that logic. Yeah, the extra plot test would be King Kong saves the world. Uh, but yeah, no, oh, uh, boy. Uh, what did Ender to end the season on, am I right? Oh, yeah. the good news is we can rip into this match all we want because we know the writer who wrote this has gotten a million times better. So let it have it. <laughs> yeah, no, eviscerate this one, please. I'm, I'm fine with it. All right. Uh, so, all right. Like, it's it all sort of goes on a... It seems kind of stiff the way it sort of transitions elements and again we could nitpick the kingdom come with like you know a, 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 a nami being a kid or the approximation to a kid if this is supposed to be set in the 60s but uh friggin uh it's like you know i wish that like you know uh fr but like i think like the story structure feels a little stiff or yeah you know, I, I guess kind of like incredibly stiff it's just sort of like here's this thing here's that thing everything just sort of like moves along at sort of an unusual pace uh you can definitely tell it's beginner used like baby's first match in a sense it's kind of like a little stiff moves along it just kind of like hobbles around with like you know okay. not all right fighting you know somewhat just like you know super average fighting but nothing like incredibly remarkable that comes to mind uh, there are definitely some typos and some errors, like, maybe not littered throughout, but it's, they're there. They are absolutely there. Uh, I didn't mind the twist of, like, you know, Antonio turning on his allies. Like, I mean, it's alright, but the way it's done here is just... I don't know, he's kind of suspicious from the beginning. I mean, I guess that was the intent, but still, it's... I don't know, it, it's just, eh, to me. Like, you know, the match is highly unmemorable, which is, like, you know, worst thing, uh, worst thing you could ask out of me personally. Uh, Very cool. <laughs> uh, that said, uh, I am glad this one does not have a continuation. Let this one burn and die right here. Uh, yeah. Alex, what'd you think of it? Uh... Just a run-of-the-mill match. The co continuity kind of frustrated me. Because GBR didn't know how to do continuity back then. Because he was too busy trying to get big names into the, his match. I was too busy try trying to traumatize a child. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, the weirdest thing is you didn't know she you didn't think about her being a child right yeah no it's like i just thought it was azumi like she was in the movie like it did not click in my head oh this is 10 years before that yeah hooray for child traumatization hooray we support that here <laughs> uh, yeah kaiju x beats his son every day <laughs> game uh, ditto, what'd you think of it? 
Yeah, it's a pretty meh. It's a meh match. Uh, yeah, there really isn't too much to say. I mean, it was interesting to see Antonio be evil. Shocker. I mean, who could have seen that coming? But, yeah, I'm really glad GVR has improved more since this match. Ah. Uh, Funnily enough, I didn't comment on this one, so I don't know what my original thoughts were two years ago. But, uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's a pretty average, not so good. Yeah. Like, if you want to read a King, King Ghidorah show a match, read Harley's Rancor, Star Wars one. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's a meh. And GVR, uh, I know you already gave out some of the history, how this was meant to be at the start of a series. Uh, but, you know, it's like, what What do you think about it? How do you feel about it after all this time and finally rereading it for yourself? What do you think? Well, clearly I loved it with the way I picked it apart, <laughs> trash-talked it, <laughs> called myself an idiot back then. <laughs> this match is not good. It's bad. It is... It is my worst match. I will say that. Like, it's worse than the Yamato trio with Final Wars Mothra for some reason versus Orochi. It's worse than that. Really? I thought that one was worse. Uh, maybe. The, both are definitely the worst, though. Like, there's, there is not a third match that competes with them for worst. For me. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, obviously, there's worse matches than those two. Like, Mine. yeah, but I'm just kidding. no, I know. Yeah, just yeah. I just meant like worst of mine. But part of my intent with this match was to make Showa Ghidorah like come off as a threat, more of a threat. Just because even back then, I guess I did kind of feel that he didn't really live up to his potential in the movies. And like, I feel like I kind of succeeded with that. But on the other hand, he is still just like. He doesn't really come off that threatening. Right, right. Especially considering the fact that it was like Megalon, more or less. I felt like Megalon was more threatening here than King Ghidorah was, if you ask me. I mean, yeah, he instantly killed Mothra. I mean, that's pretty easy to do. It is Moth. It is Showa Mothra, so. Well, yeah, but King Ghidorah couldn't do it. <laughs> right. So. Well, yeah, yeah, it's King Ghidorah. Like, I think yeah. the most damage. King Ghidorah did to Mothra in this match was Mothra slamming into Ghidorah's back. Right. And even that was more Mothra on Ghidorah rather than Ghidorah on Mothra, so... Yeah. But no, I am definitely glad to look at my later matches and see that I have improved a lot over this. Mm -hmm. That is the only benefit from this. <laughs> Because, yeah, I think it's fair to say that the matches of mine that have come out since this are much better. Oh, yeah. Mm. So. So, yeah. Uh, and I uh, guess, like, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Just, like, real quick little thing. I know when I wrote this match because I wrote this match while I was co writing Redman versus Team Creepypasta with Soul Godzilla. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's why I said I wrote this match in 2017. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, back then, um, as soon as I typed the last word of a match, I sent it off. Right. Uh, yep, no, that sounds about right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my piece on this. All right. Uh, do we have any additional thoughts to add on to that? Anything anyone remembers or anything? Or It's ugly. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I remember before reading this match, the only thing I really remembered was Megalon, like, turning on Mothra. And that was really it. That was, like, the only thing I remembered before reading this again. Yeah, it's a good thing we're putting GVR on the watch list now. 2017, Damn. 2017 GVR is going on the watch list. No, we're put, we're putting him on there. Okay. <laughs> right here, right now. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Put the guy who wrote the <laughs> three on the watch list. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're in, uh... All right, well, with that said... Oh, gosh. Uh, this has, this has been KDBCE number 30, and we'll see you guys next time for the next season of The Committee Reads. So till then, everyone, take care. Save us, because 164 is in it. I know, 164, the road. Th this whole KDBCE thing was just a detour, so I wouldn't have to suffer. <laughs> and here's Kaiju X saying, we'll see you next time for the next season of The Committee Laughing Reads. Am I right? <laughs> <God>? <laughs> <laughs> KWC, more like KFC. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Megalon turned Mothra into in this match. <laughs> the KFCE. <laughs>